Hello, my name's Emma Smith. I teach at the University of Oxford. I'm actually not at my desk right now. I'm sorry I don't have a lovely backdrop of, of books uh, from my office. Maybe we'll have another chance to do that in better times. Uh, but it's a great thrill to have the chance to talk to you about King John, my favourite of the history plays. I think it's my favourite because it isn't con connected to any of the others. That's obviously different from the Richard II to Henry V work, uh, or the three parts of Henry VI, those plays make clear that they are parts of a serial, they're, they're, they're episodic. And as being in being part of a serial, they say something important about the long chains of cause and effect that govern uh, historical process, historical narrative. I think by being on its own, by being a one-off, King John also has something interesting to say about cause and effect, and that's that it's pretty sceptical about it. And as you read the play, I think you'll find uh, sometimes it's quite hard to know what the actual relationship is between events uh, which follow one from another. That's to say, uh, are these events um, and, or are they so? Uh, are the events just uh, temporally connected or are they causally connected? Are they about, you know, this makes this happen? I think this is a play which is really bracingly sceptical uh, about the randomness of why things happen. Uh, sometimes asks the question explicitly, what's the relation between this act uh, and this outcome? But uh, in any way, it's one of the early ways, I think, in which it is sceptical uh, about some of the things we take for granted in the history play genre. There are a couple of other ways in which it's really quite distinct too. I think one I'd want to bring out is the role for women. Certainly in the, uh, the history plays that Shakespeare writes later, Richard II to Henry V, women have a pretty uh, small role. They tend to be uh, asking their husbands why they don't confide in them or why they're away so much or something. They're slightly, slightly whiny, just a little bit on the, on, on the sidelines. That couldn't be further from the truth uh, in King John. We start with um, an extraordinary figure, uh, the mother of King John, uh, we get Lady Falconbridge, uh, we get um, uh, the mother of, of Prince Arthur. And what's important about these figures are they're mothers of sons, rather than as history has tended to see itself as a relationship between fathers and sons. And to add to that, I think it's important to point out Shakespeare's one big alteration to his sources. Well, actually, there are two. Um, as you read this play, you might be wondering, why is there no Magna Carta? Isn't that the most famous thing about uh, King John's reign? Uh, this Bill of Rights, this uh, really important kind of relationship between John and the nobles. It's interesting that that wasn't such a big deal uh, in the Elizabethan period. It hadn't become the great document uh, of civil rights that it's become since. Uh, but also, um, I think Shakespeare has veered away from uh, a kind of document of consensus and of, of concord between uh, John and the nobles, because his play is all about uh, the, the contention between them. Uh, but the one thing that I was going to say that Shakespeare does change to his sources is actually the introduction of a character called, pardon me, the Bastard. So the Bastard Falconbridge um, begins the play, a really wonderful, funny scene, quite a difficult scene, but you're used to reading Shakespeare now, you'll, you, you'll get through it and try and see the humour in it. Quite a difficult, funny scene where uh, the, 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 uh, this character wants to be identified as a bastard. He wants his legitimacy uh, to be questioned. His mother is brought in to attest to this. It's a very, um, uh, it's, it's a very funny, I think it's actually a very funny, dry, off-key kind of a scene. But it establishes illegitimacy as a practical, a literal quality, but also a figurative quality. Everybody in this play is illegitimate. Power is illegitimate. Authority is illegitimate. The bastard is the symbol of the play's um, temper, if you like, or its, its kind of attitude to life. And the bastard is a really distinctly Shakespearean character. You've already read Romeo and Juliet, so you have... in. I encountered this character in, in, in the figure of Mercutio, someone who is not part of, looks on on a, a great conflict or a great feud, a great rivalry, isn't really part of it, um, uh, is able to comment on it to some extent from the, from the outside. And God willing, if, if we get to the summer, you'll see another one in Antony and Cleopatra, 
uh, in the figure of Ina Barbus, another figure more or less invented by Shakespeare to be this kind of choric commentary figure. And the bastard gives us that, but by no means in a kind of neutral way. Uh, if you want a good example, look at his very last speech. He's given the last lines of the play, the point where you think uh, we're going to sum up what this has meant. We're going to get the meaning and the kind of takeaway. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you look at that speech and think, is is this guy for real? Is is this straight? Are we meant to take this uh, as the, the last word of the play? Or is it another piece of kind of irony and distancing? I just love this play. I think it's so modern. It's so... Um, it's so amazingly free of the things like the Divine Right of Kings and uh, a kind of feudal uh, organisation. If you've got anywhere in your mind the idea of uh, the great chain of being, these old uh, historical ideas we used to have about how everything was in its place in the Elizabethan age, everybody knew uh, where they were in a line between angels and worms or dirt or something. Uh, I think this is, I don't think that's tr true. Uh, actually, and I think King John is a play which really uh, reveals that everything is up for grabs in a really pragmatic way. If there's a Bible for this uh, for this play, it's not uh, it's not the scriptures. It's not it's not the religious scriptures. It's something more like uh, Machiavelli's The Prince or, or or something. And there are moments of um, sort of high emotional drama, usually undercut with something like bathos. It's very generically uh, and tonally uh, challenging. I'd really, uh, maybe maybe it'll be possible for me to, to listen in a bit on the, the counter discussions uh, you, you guys have about this play. Uh, but uh, well done, keep going in Shakespeare uh, 2020. And it's been a pleasure to talk with you about King John. Thanks.